Thank you, Daryl. Good morning. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with us. Come into his presence to sing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are God's people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness is from generation to generation. Let us worship God. God of majesty, you love us with an everlasting love, and show us the way to justice and peace. In Jesus Christ, you have reconciled the whole world to you and claimed us as your own, that we may live as his body on earth, and with all the saints enter into your glory on the last day. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. <clears throat> Excuse me. With sincere and repentant hearts, let us name our sins against Christ and one another. Let's pray together. Too often we may make excuses for not being in the care of the 
I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. The relentless grace of Jesus Christ always finds and forgives us.
And now let us go to God in our hearts with our own private prayers. Holy God, open your word. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that our eyes may be enlightened and that we may know the hope to which we have been called. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the prophet Ezekiel, uh, chapter 34, beginning at the 11th verse. So let us listen for what God is saying to us through these words. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will stretch, search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on the rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. And our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Now, it's hard to believe that we have reached the end of another church year. Our church worship year ends this Sunday, this week with Christ the King Sunday. And just to make sure that we don't miss that today is the end of the year, we find a text from the Gospel of Matthew about the last day, the day of judgment. So let us hear this word of God to us today in a parable about when the Son of Man comes in glory. As for this, uh, let's see, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, almost every time that I read this parable or reflect upon it with others, the first reaction experienced is guilt. If the criterion for getting into heaven is whether or not I have helped someone in need, then I haven't done enough. I've helped some when it was convenient. But yes, I drove past that person holding a sign standing by the side of the road. Someone called the church to ask for assistance. I was not able to help them. I was busy and I just forgot to make that call or stop by. Looks like it's going to be goats for me. You know, we all have our own stories to tell, but I suspect if serving the least of these is the only criterion, then even with our best efforts, we're all going to the goats. We just have to admit that and confess it up front. So, is that all there is to this parable? Guilt and hopelessness? A call to action that is impossible to heed? It seems like a simple yes or no kind of parable. But, since we have a few moments this morning, let's dig a little deeper and see what else we can find. Well, the first thing we find, and we sometimes forget, is that this is a parable. You may be familiar with New Testament scholar C.H. Dodd's classic definition of a parable. He said, at its simplest, the parable is a metaphor or simile drawn from nature or common life, arresting the hearer by its vividness or strangeness, and leaving the mind in sufficient doubt about its precise application as to tease it into active thought. Well, that's quite a definition. But at its essence, Dodd says that parables are not designed to be easy to understand or to explain. They are intended to be strange, to make us ponder what in the world is it talking about? To tease our mind into active thought, 
and then to elicit some kind of response. So Jesus tells parables. He throws stories alongside a reality in order to make us really think about the good news of the gospel or the kingdom of God. Jesus tells parables to give us insight into the gospel in ways that we might not have noticed before. So what is fascinating about this particular parable is that if we read it carefully, the very characters in the parable are all surprised by the gospel. We expect the king to come in glory, to sit on a throne, and to judge the nations. The good ones are in, the bad ones are out. That's what the messianic king is supposed to do on the last day. No surprise there. But what is striking is that the king is already present. Here, in this world, in the messiness and ambiguity of life now, long before the day of judgment at the end of time. As retired Presbyterian pastor John Buchanan writes, God is here, particularly in your neighbor, the one who needs you. You want to see the face of God? Look into the face of one of the least of these the vulnerable, the weak, the children. Yes, God is here. That is a surprise in this text. And it puzzles us how this could be the case because that's exactly where we fail to see the king. That's exactly where we miss Jesus. Now, I guess like most people, when we think of royalty, we think of, you know, palaces and gorgeous dresses, you know, a television show like The Crown, of William and Kate and their three cute little kids on the cover of some magazine in the supermarket checkout line, or Disney princesses with castles and pretty gowns and people standing in line for hours to get their picture made with them. But in the face of our neighbor, or the vulnerable, the weak, the child, in the face of the woman who cleans your hotel room, or who drives a city bus, in the face of a man standing on the corner with a sign, in the face of a woman with bruises on her arms and above her eyes, in the face of a child failing at school, in the face of the prisoner whose mugshot we see on the front page of the newspaper, in the face of a family standing in line for the chance at a few cans of food. When was the last time we stood in line to have our picture made with any of them? Again, the point is not to make you feel bad or to induce guilt. We've already established that we're all goats. I share this with you because I want you to notice that everyone in this parable misses the king too, not just us. The king in his glory, on his throne, divides the sheep from the goats. And in both groups, Everyone says, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty? And when was it that we saw you a stranger or naked? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison? Yes, everyone recognizes the king on the throne in glory, but no one can remember having seen him before. They missed the king when he was right in front of them. So they all say, when, Lord, did we see you? And the king will say, truly I tell you, 
Inasmuch as you did it for one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. God was there. Jesus was there, not in glory, but in the face of one of the least of these. We see Jesus all the time, but we miss him. Is your mind turning that over yet? then perhaps I can spin it a little bit more. Several years ago, a friend of ours traveled as part of a mission team to Reynosa, Mexico. One morning on that trip, they arrived at the work site ready to mix concrete, carry block, build some walls. They were ready to serve to use their gifts to help Juanita, one of the least of these. They were building her a home. And as they were preparing to start their work, Juanita came and offered them cups of coffee. Now, my friend said they had been warned and were doing everything in their power not to drink the water of Mexico. You know why. And of course, Juanita's coffee was made of 100% Mexican water. Well, our friend politely declined, but another member of the team who was close beside him said softly, she really wants to serve us coffee. So still with great hesitation, He smiled and took the cup. He said joy danced in Juanita's eyes when he took a sip of that hot liquid. You see, at that moment, he was firmly entrenched as a goat. And perhaps, just perhaps, Juanita saw the workers as those in need. So she offered them a cup of coffee. We see Jesus all the time. He's there in the hungry who need food, in the thirsty who need something to drink, in the stranger who needs to be welcomed. He's there in the naked who need clothing, in the sick who need someone to care for them, in the prison inmates who need to be visited. He's in the child failing in school or in the school lacking the resources to allow her to succeed. He's in the child hooked on drugs and in your neighbor addicted to alcohol. He's in the crumbling marriage of your best friend. He's in the church member terrified by a recent diagnosis or who sees the end of a life just around the corner. He's in the one who lost a job with bills to pay. He's in the family who thought they had found a home, but who will soon be on the streets. Jesus is there. He's all around us. And if we have faith and courage, we just might admit that Jesus might even be in the goats like you and me. It's only when we admit that we are goats that we miss Jesus all the time. And that sometimes we might even be the least of these who cannot possibly make it into heaven on our own. That our hearts will be open enough to see the needs of others. And then the king shall say, even to goats like you and me, welcome home. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now, having heard the word of the Lord, read and proclaimed, let us rise in body or in spirit as we are able and proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in
Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God, our judge and our redeemer, we give you thanks for this day, for the ways that you have blessed our lives with abundance, for feasts and gatherings with family and friends, for traveling mercies over this holiday weekend, for days off from school and work, for warm homes, warm smiles, and warm hearts. Christ, our teacher and our companion, we lift up to you those people and places in our world who are suffering this morning. For creation, groaning under the weight of a changing climate. For people living in places of war and violence, especially Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. For people who are hungry, thirsty, homeless, in prison, or in immigration detention centers, for all who have spent Thanksgiving sick, grieving, or lonely. Holy Spirit, our comforter and our provoker, empower us to work toward your saving purposes in the world, to feed, clothe, and welcome people who lack life's basic necessities, to embrace the ones our world calls untouchable, to lift our voices in the public square for those whose voices are disregarded or silenced, and to pursue justice and peace in our personal relationships, our communities, and the whole of your world. God, we lift up to you these and the many more thanksgivings and petitions spilling out of our hearts this morning as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus calls us to reach out and care for our neighbors in need, one way we can do this is together as a church, the corporate body of Christ, so we offer our gifts to God for God's work in our community.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we bless your name because you have called us and claimed us and sent us into the world to do your will. Receive now this offering, both of our money and our lives. Through these gifts, may the hungry be fed, the thirsty quenched, the naked clothed, and the stranger welcomed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we go from this place, remember that wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who dwells within you, has something he wants to do through you. And God has given you the Holy Spirit to guide, equip, and sustain you along the way. Believe it and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And now, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the peace and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen.